Hello, this is Travis Romine, and today we're going to be talking about my Southern California Edison electric bill with my Tesla solar panels, February 2021. Let's go. All right, real quick, I'm gonna be doing um, videos, continue to do videos on my billing through Southern California Edison every month, all year long. And at the end of the year, calculate all the numbers. So uh, like and subscribe and you can get all that information. Also, I'll be doing separate videos on my solar production from month to month. Those will be a separate video. Um, the billing uh, videos that I do, I go through the entire bill and I calculate it from the billing dates, which is usually around the 9th to the ninth of the next month. So yeah, check them out. All right, to give you some specs on my system, I live in Southern California, just above San Diego in the Temecula Murrieta Valley area. Uh, my system is 12.24 kilowatts. It's 36 panels, um, which is about 340 watts per panel. Um, I get pretty much sun all day long. Um, sometimes I get clouds, but there's no trees or anything that creates shade on my panels that is close by. It's all pretty, uh, pretty sunny all day long. And my panels face uh, east-west with my largest array facing west. So, All right, I'm in my garage right now. And to anyone out there who wants to know um, if it's a really cloudy day, how much energy you can produce with a 12.24 kilowatt system, um, I'm going to show you. So right now I'm getting about 2.84 kilowatts. It's almost noon on March 15th, and I'm gonna show you what it looks like outside, all the clouds. Let's take a quick look. All right, so as you can see, there's no sun. It's just a cloudy day. And I would say the clouds are not light, but not the darkest I've seen them. So even when there's no sun at all and it's completely cloudy and the clouds are a little on the dark side, you can still get a lot of energy production from your solar panels. All right, well, this is my bill from uh, February, 2021. As you can see, my amount due is $11.34. If we look into the account summary, you can see that uh, my previous balance was $108.69. That was a bill before I got solar. I was just paying that off. So my new charges are $11.34. And that's basically um, uh, what I call a, a connection fee. Um, there's other names for it, um, non-bypassable charges. It's basically um, a fee they charge to connect the grid to your house. And you have to pay that every single month. I'm in a year uh, billing period. So every month I'll pay that basic charge. And at the end of the year, um, with all my extra energy that I sent to the grid, they will send me a check back um, to pay for all those, uh, all that energy I sent. They call energy credits. So they'll send me a check for the energy credits, and that should offset my basic fee that I pay every month. So I'll be doing this month to month um, for a year, and at the end of the year, I'll calculate everything up, see what check I get back, and see how much it offsets. And I believe it'll offset my basic charge, so at the end of the year, I should have not paid for any electricity and maybe got a little bit money over that, but we'll check that out at the end of the year. So as you can see, it says understanding net energy. You are billed annually for your energy charges because they can be offset by energy credits over a 12 month billing period. Any changes not offset by credits will become due at the end of your 12 month billing period. You also receive a monthly bill. That's my basic charge. It reflects the minimum amount due each month, which supports the cost of maintenance and operation of providing electricity. So again, basically just having your house connected to the grid, you have to pay a basic charge just for that connection fee, which is separate than energy credits. Um, it'd be nice if they just rolled all that into one so I didn't have to pay them and then they send me a check at the end of the year, but that's the way they do it. So um, that's the way we'll do it. Um, as you can see, I am on the care program here. Uh, it says you received a discount of $4.48 this month for being enrolled in the care program. That's just a discount program that I'm involved in. Um, I might be discontinuing that. Um, because I'm selling energy back to the grid, um, I wonder if the CARE program uh, does gives a discount when I sell it back um, to the energy companies. I've heard, 
I've talked to someone online and they said, hey, you need to get rid of the CARE program because when you sell energy back, they're getting out a discount because you're on the CARE program. I called Southern California Edison and they said that, no, when you receive uh, energy from us, you get a discount, but when you sell it back to us, you don't. And so there's kind of a, I'm not sure how that works yet. I'm going to have to get more information on that and I'll talk about that as I find out more. So I'll probably call Edison again and try to get more information. All right, we'll scroll down and see what else we have here on the bill. Um, right here, your new monthly, your new charges due monthly. Even if you have no year-to-date energy charges, you incur some monthly new charges. Again, the monthly new charges are the connection fee, the basic charges. Um, they call them non-bypassable charges. So that's what that's talking about. So right here, uh, year-to-date charges. So I have a credit for $117.98 settled at the end of the 12-month billing period on or about January 25th. It says, let's see, you do not owe any energy charges as of this month. Only make payment for this month's new charges. Keep track of your year-to-date charges as you may have charges in the future. If you are a net generator, which I am, at the end of the 12-month billing period, you'll be eligible for a net surplus compensation. Yes, that's what I'm looking for to offset my basic uh, charge that I pay month to month. So again, uh, at the end of the year, I'm gonna, if my calculations are correct, I should be getting back more than I've paid. And that's why I will not pay for electricity again the rest of my life. Just uh, net metering and sending more energy back to the grid than I receive and getting that check back that offsets the basic uh, fee that I pay month to month. So we'll check that out at the end of the year. Hoping my calculations are correct. It's kind of a big investment to uh, get involved in if the numbers don't match, but so far so good. All right, this is just a bunch of um, Im information explaining different things, uh, electronic. This is just basic information they put on all the bills. What is a late payment charge? Well, I think we can figure that out by the name. All right, we'll keep scrolling down to... So right here, it talks about my uh, time of use. So my energy that I buy from the grid is on a time of use, meaning um, depending on which time of the day, I pay a different amount. So right here, if you look at all my mid-peak, off-peak, and super off-peak, um, basically the mid-peak between 4 p.m. and 9 p.m. is the most expensive time to use electricity. Any other time, off-peak, super off-peak, those are the same. Um, I get charged the same amount for each one, even though they split it up into three, mid-peak is the only time. But because I generate more electricity than I use, um, that all offsets. But I do try not to use energy between 4 and 9 p.m. if I don't have to. When I charge my electric car, um, I charge it anytime after 9 p.m. So it charges at night, and when I wake up in the morning, it's fully charged. So it doesn't matter to me when it charges because it's always ready in the morning uh, when I leave. So those are the time of use charges. All right, we'll scroll down to your past and current electricity usage. So right here it shows mid-peak, off-peak, and super off-peak of energy that I've used. Um, consumption, meaning what I pulled from the grid. That's how many kilowatts I pulled from the grid um, during the mid, off, and super off-peak. And right below that, um, this is winter time, so I'm on the winter billing period. So that's why it says winter season net generation. Right below that is how much energy I've generated and sent back to the grid. So you can see how much I pulled in from the grid uh, consumption and how much I've sent back to the grid um, in that generation. So it says I've sent back 665 kilowatts back to the grid, um, more than I've used. So but from what I've pulled in and what I've sent back, um, I've netted a credit of 665 kilowatts. Now, some of the energy that comes from my solar goes directly into the house. It does not get sent back to the grid. So I have generated more energy uh, than this. So the energy from the solar I'll use in the house and whatever the energy that I'm not using in the house gets sent back to the grid. So that's kind of the breakdown on there. It kind of says on the right side, consumption is the total amount of electricity imported from Southern California Edison. Net generation is the amount of excess energy exported to the grid by your generation system. Total electricity usage is your system's total net generation minus your total consumption. That's where we get the 665 kilowatts um, that I've sent back to the grid. And it has a little graph here, just basically uh, showing two years ago, my uh, daily average usage is 14 kilowatts. That was before I got my electric car and uh, didn't use as much air conditioning back then. <laughs> 
It gets a lot hotter around here, so we use a lot more air conditioner. Last year, you can see uh, between the two years and the last year, it jumped up to 39.50 uh, kilowatts. That's because I got an electric car and I did a lot of driving. I was commuting back then, used a lot more air conditioner last year. And this year you can see that I have a credit of 22.17 uh, kilowatts, which is my uh, daily average electricity usage. I like how they compare them from uh, February 2021 to February 20 and February 19 to see kind of where you're at. And it looks like Obviously, the solar is working. It just kind of shows you two years ago and a year ago compared to now, so that's really great. All right, so we'll scroll down to the details of new charges. Um, I am on the, my rate plan is the T time of use D prime care plan. Um, and right below, it shows the billing period, the 9th to the 11th. 30-day uh, billing period, that does change sometimes. I've had it, uh, I think last month was 34 days, so... That's always important to see how many days they're billing you for to if you're going to run the numbers and everything. So my delivery charges cost to deliver your electricity. So the basic charge, um, eleven eighty five care discount four forty eight. Uh, the non bypassable charges CTC, NDC, and PPPC. They'll explain those towards the bottom of this, but basically they're uh, it all groups together for uh, what I call a basic charge, the fee that you have to pay once a month just to connect to the grid. Um, so the subtotal menu charges basically is eleven dollars and thirty four cents. On the right, you'll see there uh, your delivery charges include eleven eighty five distribution charge. Your overall energy charges include a ten cents franchise fee. So this breaks down all the fees and everything. But you know, again, it just ro all rolls into one number that you have to pay once a month to connect to the grid. Um, right at the bottom there, it says net surplus compensation rollover. That will be changed over to check instead of rollover. Um, rollover just gives you a choice to roll your energy credits into the next year as opposed to getting a check for your um, net energy credits. Why would you want to roll over instead of getting a check? Um, if you don't think you're going to produce enough energy, um, it would be better to roll over your credits and use those credits. I'm going to produce way more energy than I use, so I don't want to roll over my excess energy credits at the end of the year because I'm going to produce a whole bunch more. So I just want to check for the excess. So I will be changing my net surplus compensation option from rollover over to check. And we'll see what that is at the end of the year. Okay, things to know. Change to the net metering monthly billing option. Um, you can read through all of these. This just basically breaks down different information about how I'm being billed and changes and stuff like that. Changes to your DWR bond charge on your bill. Yeah, this is the stuff a lot of us just don't read, but if you're interested, here it is. At the bottom, you'll see changes are coming to your account. From March 29 to April 11th, our billing services and parts of Southern California Edison will be temporarily unavailable. So they did send me a notice, my billing period. I think they're changing the way they do the billing, so um, it'll be interesting to see what that is. This is something new. This isn't something that's regularly on the bill. I did receive notification for that, so... Yeah, when I get the new bill, we'll see if they change the billing period or any changes they make to it. That'll be interesting. So we'll see what that turns out to be. So if I scroll down here, uh, details of your tracked charges. So this is just a breakdown of uh, mid-peak, off-peak, and super off-peak. Basically, how many kilowatts I used, what I get charged in different uh, time of use during the day. Breaks down the charges right there. And obviously, in the super off-peak is where I really made uh, all my credits. They made the super off-peak the exact same times the sun is up. So yeah, you make a lot less money when the sun is up. That didn't used to be like that. Um, they did change it because I know a lot of people are switching over to solar, so they basically pay you less uh, money. Super off peak is where you make the least amount of money. And uh, yeah, that's when the sun is up basically. So uh, generation charges right below that. It kind of breaks everything down by kilowatt, how much uh, cents a kilowatt it charges or credits. And then uh, you can see the totals there. So at the very bottom, you see energy charge total. So I made a, a energy credit of $86.73. So if we uh, look into the uh, additional information regarding your net consumption and generation, your year-to-date energy charges total of the previous month, I was uh, credited $31.25. The current month energy charge is eighty six seventy three. So so far over two months this year of having solar, my year to date energy credit is one hundred and seventeen dollars and ninety eight cents. 
um, which is equivalent to 1,073 kilowatts. So I've sent back to the grid totally this year 1,073 kilowatts, which they see as a credit of 117.98. Now, as we track this year-to-date energy uh, credit, which is 117.98 each year and it accumulates, right now it's looking like, wow, I'm gonna get $117.98 back from them as of now, and by the end of the year, wow, it might be $500 or $600. I'm pretty sure they don't pay you this exact amount at the end of the year. What they pay you for your energy that you send back to the grid is a different amount. So I'm assuming that it'll be less than this, but we'll find out at the end of the year. Um, that'll be very interesting. <laughs> That's the million dollar question, right? So we'll check that out at the end of the year. And at the bottom, things to know. What's on your bill? This is basically a breakdown of the non-bypassable charges, all the abbreviations and how they explain them. But again, those just roll into the basic connection charge to the grid. Um, they break them down in different fees and taxes and different things. But at the end of the day, it's a basic charge, which this month is around $11. Um, just to be connected to the grid, these are the fees you have to pay. Again, it's interesting that they separate them from the energy credits. Um, when I get a whole bunch of energy credits, they will not apply them to the basic connection fee charge. But uh, again, at the end of the year, I'll receive a check. It should offset that amount. But again, we'll, uh, we'll see at the end of the year to answer that million dollar question. All right, well, that's my electric bill. Um, last month, it was around $12. This month, it was around $11. And I have almost $120 in energy credits from Southern California Edison. So, so far, everything's working out as planned. Um, I'm gonna keep doing these videos each month. Look at the money that uh, credits that I get and uh, we'll see how that works out calculate at the end of the year see what kind of check I get from Edison so uh, like and subscribe and we'll get you all that information and I'll be doing a production energy solar production video um, the beginning of every month so in April 1st no pun intended I'll be doing another video on solar production so check that out so I hope you're getting uh, a lot of information from this electric bill I know that different uh, electric companies do things differently but this uh, video series is just to let you know about my situation. So uh, yeah, we'll see you on the next one.